Welcome to the Dan Diet, where we are losing 25 pounds in two months. In this video, we're going over how to weigh and measure food. When I originally lost 25 pounds in two months, I did it by counting calories, and in order to do that, you need to weigh and measure your food. Anything you ingest needs to be weighed or measured. This includes food, drinks, and supplements. Lucky for us, Drinks and supplements are easy because it has the calorie listing right on the bottle or can and it's already in one serving size. Most foods do not come in one serving size, so we need to calculate the calories. And remember, only calories matter on the Dan diet, so you can eat whatever you want as long as you don't go over your daily calorie limit. If you don't know how to calculate your daily calorie limit, I'll put a link for that video in the description below. To ensure we don't go over our daily calorie limit, make sure you track your calories. If you want to see the method I use for tracking calories, I'll put a link for it in the description below. But in order to track calories, we need to determine how many calories each food item is using measurements. You'll need two things for this, a food scale and measuring spoons or cups. These things are absolutely required for the Dan diet. You cannot complete the diet and lose 25 pounds in two months without these, so make sure you have them. Food scales are inexpensive, and you can get them online or at many stores for less than $20. You want to make sure it's large enough to hold the food you need to weigh. It's easy to use and easy to clean. I prefer one with digital numbers because it makes it very easy to read. I also recommend making sure it can measure in ounces. Measuring spoons and cups are cheaper and can even be found at the dollar store. I'll put a link for a food scale and measuring spoons and cups in the description below. You'll use the food scale to weigh food to calculate the portion size, and based off of that, you can calculate calories. You want to make sure you've read the owner's manual before using it. First, have your food ready. Here, I have my food cooked, cut up, and ready to go. Then turn on your scale. If you need to, set it to grams or ounces depending on what units you need based on the serving size of the food. The serving size can usually be found on the nutrition label of the food. Since we are not counting the weight of the container holding the food, you want to measure the container, then zero out the scale while the container is still on it. If your scale doesn't have this feature, measure the empty container and write down how much it weighs, then subtract it from the total weight. The reason for this is because you don't want to include the weight of the container because you're not eating it, you're eating the food. Here, I have leftover London broil that I want to eat. I'll turn on the food scale, make sure it's set to the correct measurements that I want. In this case, it's ounces. Then I'll place the container on the scale and zero it out. Some food scales will allow you to place the container on the scale, then turn it on, which automatically zeroes out the scale. Once the container is on the food scale and the weight is zeroed out, I can start adding my food into the empty container. I'll stop adding food when I get to a certain weight or when I've put enough food for me to eat in the container. If we need to get an exact weight, we can now add or remove food. Always weigh food after cooking since food can shrink or expand, such as meat and rice. Now we have an accurate reading in the total weight of the food. Since I already zeroed out the scale when it had the empty container on it, the weight shown is the only weight of the food. I'm interested to know if you already have a food scale. A survey will appear in the upper right. Go ahead and take the survey, letting me know if you already have a food scale. If you need to measure something that's in a different measurement other than weight, such as cups or tablespoons, then this is possible to do. Here I have peanut butter. The nutrition label tells me the serving size is one tablespoon, so I take my tablespoon and scoop out peanut butter. Be sure to fill the spoon, but level it off at the top to get an accurate measurement. Any food coming out of the spoon or cup should not be counted as this is beyond the measurement of the spoon or cup. Once you have the weight or measurement, the next step is to determine how many calories it is. I have a video on how to do this and I'll put a link for that video in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode of the Dan Diet. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when I post a new video, which is usually every Monday. On your screen will be links to other videos, and I'll put those links to the videos in the description field below. Be sure to leave any questions you have in the comments. If there's a video you want me to make, put it in the comments as well. Keep losing that weight.